Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we're checking out the Wella WE1010 binary. In a world of non-binary, we are back. Yeah, now this is a soldering iron. It's kind of like professionals. It's a bit old, outdated technology, but it's the only one I could find in the shops as I have a problem. I've got a couple of wires here and I need to fuse them back together and yeah, so I need to do that. So I need a soldering iron and we're gonna be seeing how good this weather is. Now, this isn't my first foray into soldering. I have soldered in the past as a child. And a couple of years ago, I bought one of these systems. It's a Yuhua 8786D. It's horrendously bad, but anyway, it's got a heat gun. So that's pretty fun to play with. And a soldering iron, as you can see, is completely destroyed. I'm not even gonna bother changing a tip on this. It has just been horrible. I think if you open it up, it looks in a really bad, horrendous state. Of course, we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison to see the quality difference. As you see, look at that. It's completely used and abused in a bad way. It just, it, I, I, I failed with it. It's just, I didn't do a good job. I just, I hated it. I'm not touching it ever again. Now I am doing something controversial as well. I'm using a lead-free solder. If you look at all the videos online, everyone loves the leaded stuff, the stuff that will poison you. So they love that in the world of electronics. I'm trying out lead-free and I also have a nice mask for myself to keep myself nice and safe. So let's go ahead and unbox this and then set it up and see if your boy, the complete amateur, super amateur, I, I call myself a super amateur in this world, super amateur if I can fuse these wires together with a little bit of lead free solder, how easy is this? And can you do it? Or do you need to pay $200 for a Sparky to come over and do it for you? Let's find out. So inside the box, you get, this is actually very interesting, you get detachable cable. So in the world of soldering, in the basic level, old school technology soldering irons, there is a Wella W1010, and there's also a Hakko 888D. The Hakko 888D, everyone loves that slightly more than the Wella. However, this one has a detach detachable cable, so you can actually unplug it and plug it back in, less parts to get damaged. And also something about this well out that drew me to it, not that it was the only one that was available in the shops, so I couldn't get a hackle. I did I'll probably get a hackle because everyone else seems to get hackle online, but anyway, I've got this guy. But the other thing that's good about this is, is that the heat temperature sensor is actually in a tip. What will that do to me? I don't know, I'll find out. You get a nice manual. Remember these guys, they're designed in Germany and made in Mexico. So a little bit of South American flair is coming onto the scene with this. Whereas the Hakko is made in Malaysia, designed in Japan. This is the actual soldering iron. So that's probably something we can start and compare, compare it with the Yuhua. And let's just open up this soldering iron and show you the inside. As you can see, there is a little bit of bronzing already happening there. So maybe it's been tested already to make sure it works. And as you can see on the inside there, it is, you can see that the tip is still capable and you get this extra tip. So the heating element is still nice and capable and looks pretty good. Whereas, like I said, this one over here, I don't know what is going on with the heating element, but it looks in complete dire strains. It's pretty much just exploded. There's just a white splodge over there. So that's nice to see that the tip is still intact. Next up, we're gonna be opening up and finding the power unit itself. That's pretty much everything that you need inside the box. It smells like burnt electronics. Newly manufactured smell, probably shouldn't be sniffing. That's probably bad for your health. Do not sniff this stuff like I just did, probably bad. So anyway, like I said, you get a replaceable plug at the back. So to set up the stand, you got a little bit of a cleaning wipe, put it in there, I'm gonna use my existing one. And you just shove this in like that, boom. And that's it, you're all ready. And that way your soldering iron can go in and rest and protect itself like that. To plug it into the power supply, you just have this six five pin connector. You have this five pin connector, you plug it in and then you rotate to lock. And let's do our test soldering. So I'm gonna turn it on. And right now it's at 31 degrees Celsius and it is boosting. It says right there it's set to 380. So it'll take about maybe a minute to go all the way to that temperature. So the solder I'm going to be using, it says the melting point is 220. So that's not that high, but you will find because of this old school kind of design where the heating element is actually inside rather than on the tip that it does drop temperature as soon as you start trying to melt some solder. So it will need to have a higher range than 300, than 220 that says on the label. 
So I'm going to lower the temperature. I'm going to make it 250 and just see how well that does with this 220 melting point solder. I've added an extra 30 degrees to hopefully give it that extra boost because we're going to have a bit of a thermal drop where the heating element is, but hopefully it'll be good enough. Now I am ready to rock for the first time. Just going to see how it is with tinning the tip of the soldering iron. So before you start, first you need to check if your soldering iron tip is compatible with lead free. I'm not sure if this is or not. Please someone let me know in the comment section below. If it isn't compatible, that means it's going to corrode the metal a lot quicker. But if it's compatible, then we're all good. I'll see what happens. If not, I'll just replace the tip with one that is compatible. So I'm not too worried about messing up this tip. So I've got the heating element and it is meant melting the solder. So that's nice. It is tipping it. And there's a lot of smoke coming out. So I'm just going to mask up for now. Because I don't want you sniffing that stuff in my throat. Yeah, I'm not too happy with how it's melting the solder because I can see it's still stuck on, blotched on to the actual iron. So I'm going to see if I can just move that out of the way. Something else I've got here, this is a soldering tip cleaner. So rather than having to scrape it off like that, I can just dip it in. And that seems to flow with the solder a little bit easier. So I'm just going to melt some. Onto the tip, that's nice. And then just dig in a few times and that will put some solder onto the actual tip. I'm going to go ahead and try fusing these two wires together. So to do that, I'll get the two wires and I'll interlock them. Just so that they're held together. And then I'm going to heat the actual wire with the soldering iron and then pass some solder into the beast. This is me soldering for the first time on the weller. Exciting stuff. So let's heat up the wire first and feed some solder in. As you can see, I made a bit of a mess with it, but let's see if I can fix that by just etching it across. And there you go, it's a nice connection there. All right, that was pretty fun, gotta say. It works pretty well. And the wires are very strong. And I guess the next thing to do would be just put a heat shrink over this and it's fully protected. But as you can see, it is a nice solid connection. So I'm going to go ahead now in the real world because I have an actual problem wire I need to fix. I'm going to go over to the other room and fix it. So I've actually ripped through the cable, heating strip cable. And if you peel it back a bit, it consists of two elements. So this one here, the shielded one, that is the heating strip. And this is the shielding that's used to connect the earth back. So if there is any arcing or anything like that, the electricity has a flow back into the earth situation. So I'm going to separate the shielding from the actual wire. There you go. And I'll twist it away. So I'm heating the wire here. And then I'm feeding the solder onto it from the top. Giving it a good amount. I've just got to give it a few seconds to warm up. I think that's it. A nice bit of solder all the way around. A big dollop. finish it up I'm just gonna dab a little bit of silicon just over it just in case there's any leaks because I want this to be watertight but that's it as you can see it was beeping before but now we're back with vengeance all right guys so that was a quick review of the Weller WE1010 in the world of non-binary we have a binary Weller and it was well a good. Obviously, it's my first use. Let's see how it's like six months down the road. Ask me in the comment section. I'll let you know. Let me know what kind of soldering irons you guys are using out there. Probably a basic one or a super awesome one. Let me know. Would you get this one? Excited to find out. Hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyed the show.